Okay, guys, chapter three now. So chapter three was all about expressions, combining like terms, simplifying, factoring out greatest common factors, that kind of a thing. We've seen these recently, but we're just going to go back over them a little bit. So the first thing we did in chapter three was figure out what terms are like terms and which ones are unlike terms. So for example, if I had Z plus eight minus four Z, and I said, what are my like terms? First, let's write out all our terms. We have Z, we have positive eight, and we have negative four Z. Remember that negative sign is part of this term. Terms that are like have the same variable to the same power. So these guys both have a Z and that Z is to the same power. So the like terms would be Z and negative four Z. Don't just put four Z, that would be wrong. Another one, let's say we had 10 x squared minus y plus 12 minus 3 x squared. Our like terms, we have x squared on both of these. So 10 x squared and negative 3 x squared. Those are our like terms. So next thing was when we would be asked to identify what is the expression if you simplify it. So if you combine your like terms. So if I have the expression 4h minus 8h, those are both like terms. They both have an h to the power of 1. So I can just combine those. 4 minus 8, negative 4 h. There you go. Another one. Let's say we had 6y so plus 9 plus 3y minus 7. So 6y and 3y are like terms, so we can combine those positive 9y, then we have positive 9 minus 7, which is 2. That would be your expression. When you are, <clears throat> excuse me, when you are asked to simplify, they're asking you to combine your like terms. That is how you will do that. So now let's go on to section 2. Okay, so now section two was all about adding and subtracting expressions. Remember when you see expressions in parentheses, you need to get rid of those parentheses before you can add them. Get that in your head. So let's start with this one. Let's say we had C minus four plus three C plus nine. We need to distribute the ones here to get rid of the parentheses, remember? <clears throat> Excuse me. So we have C minus 4 plus 3C plus 9. Now we can combine our terms. The C and the positive 3C would give us 4C. Negative 4 plus 9 would give us positive 5. That would be how you would add those expressions. Now, let's say we had one like where we need to do some subtraction. So let's say we had x minus one minus three x plus two. Remember that in order to Add or subtract, you need to get rid of the parentheses, so there's still a 1 here. Let's distribute the 1. We have x minus 1, and now here we have a negative 1. So negative 1 times 3x would give you negative 3x. Negative 1 
times positive 2 would give you negative 2. Now we can combine our terms. x minus 3x would give us negative 2x. Negative 1 minus 2 would give us negative 3. Now let's do one more if there are 3 that you need to combine. Let's say this were our problem. We have 4 minus 3.7b minus negative 5.4b minus 4 minus 1.2b plus 1. There we go. Now we have to solve this whole thing. So let's start by again distributing our ones and getting these terms. So here we'll have 4 positive 1 to, to negative 0 0.3, I mean 3.7b. The negative 1 here we distribute negative 1 times negative 5.4b would give you positive 5.4b. So that's why you pay attention to if you're distributing a positive or a negative. Again, negative times a negative, so that's going to give us positive 4. Then distribute this negative 1. That's going to give us negative 1.2b and negative 1. Now let's combine our terms. Let's start with our whole numbers that are like terms. We have 4, we have 4, and we have negative 1. 4 plus 4 is 8, and then minus 1 would give us 7. So we know we're going to have 7. Then let's combine all our b's. Negative 3.7 plus 5.4 minus 1.2 would give us 0.5b plus 7 as our answer. So that's what we did in lesson 2. Lesson 3 is where we did a lot of distributing to get the answers. So for example, if I had 2a minus 3, and it told you to simplify this expression. Remember, if you have a letter or a number or something right next to parentheses like that, that means multiply. So we're going to multiply by distributing that 2. We end up with 2a minus 6, right? We can do another one. Let's say we had negative 3 times 4x minus 10, that would give you negative 12, negative times a positive is a negative, and then negative times a negative would give you positive 30. Make sure that you're watching those signs. Let's give you one with a fraction. Let's try that. Let's say we have, oops, so we have three-fourths times 8g minus one-fourth minus two-thirds g. Now, we still have to distribute. Remember when we multiply fractions, you just multiply um, the numerator and the denominator. So 3 times 8 will give us 24 over 4, because you could just imagine that over 1, right? G. Then we have a positive times a negative here, so we end up with negative 3 over 16. Then, 
Here we end up with 6 over 12. Now we need to combine our terms. We have 24 over 4G minus 6 over 12G. So we can make this over 12 if we multiplied the top and the bottom by 3. We would end up with 72 over 12 g minus 3 sixteenths minus 6 twelfths g. So now we can subtract that 6 from the 72. That'll give us 66. I'm going to start writing up here so we have space. That'll give us 66 over 12 g minus our three sixteenths. All right. Now we go ahead and simplify, turn that um, 66 over 12 into a mixed number. It would be five and a half G minus three sixteenths. That'll be your answer. So all we did in section three, sorry, I didn't change that there. All we did in section three was distribute the, the answers, which is just multiplying the things in the parentheses. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get ready to move to section four. Section four is our last chapter in this section, and this is where we factored out, either factoring out the coefficient or factoring out the greatest common factor. So, for example, our first problem, we have 18a minus 12. And we want to take out of both of those numbers, what is the factor of both of them? All right, so think about it, list out, what are all your factors? The things that can be multiplied together to equal either 18 or 12. So, we know that we can take a 6 out. We divide 18 by 6. We're left with 3a. We divide 12 by 6. We're left with negative 2. That's your answer for that one. Now, another one. Let's say I had 2b plus 8. I can factor out a 2. That is a factor of both of those. So I'm left with b plus four. Remember when I'm factoring these out, I'm dividing those numbers out. All right, so when it says to factor using GCF, the greatest common factor, you are going to divide all of the numbers by whatever that greatest fact common factor is. Now we're going to do factoring out the coefficient. You do them the same way, it's just knowing which number is which. So greatest common factor is the factor that can be divided into both of them. That's the greatest. The coefficient is the number in front of the variable, remember. So for example, if it says factor out the coefficient, the coefficient here is this negative five that's attached to the variable. So factor out negative five, we're left with P, 20 divided by negative 5 would give us negative 4. There you go. So if it asks you to factor out the coefficient, that's the number attached to the variable. Greatest common factor, that's the number that can be divided into both of those. And that is chapter 3.